Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of our Speak Out series. I'm Rhiannon Wicks, and I'm the coordinator of the Bolt Foundation and the moderator for today's career discussion, focusing on the area of estimating. The Bolt Foundation is a very simple but important mission to inspire the next generation of construction professionals right here in the greater Toronto area. One way to do that is to ensure that young people are, have the information they need to choose a career that they are passionate about and can be successful in. This series facilitates discussions on some of the in-demand careers in construction and how young people can get started. Our panel is made up of industry professionals, including employers and senior staff, to provide useful insights into the education and training requirements, physical demands, what to expect day to day, and advancement opportunities within the specific construction career. I want to acknowledge and thank our series sponsor, RBC Future Launch, for their generous support of this important initiative to help close the information gap and get more youth interested in construction careers. Let's hear from our sponsors now. Hi everyone, my name is Mark Beckles and I'm the Vice President of Social Impact and Innovation here at RBC. Today, youth are the most unemployed age group in Canada, with almost 800,000 young Canadians not currently in employment, education or training. Canada's skilled tradespeople that have long been the backbone of our economy are more critical than ever. And so is solving this sector's main challenges the underrepresentation of women and immigrants, the need to double down on digital training, and the ongoing stigmas around trades careers. And while these challenges are significant, so are the opportunities. Through the RBC Future Launch partnership with Bolt, we aim to ensure that you understand what opportunities are available in the skilled trades industry and how to get started in a career that you are passionate about. Because at RBC, we see a future in your future. So as mentioned, today's discussion focuses on the field of estimating and some of the career opportunities available. So we'll start by meeting our industry panel and I will turn and you can meet our three lovely gentlemen here and I'll let them start by introducing themselves and we'll start with Tom. Hi, I'm Tom Alieros, Senior Director here at uh, Tridel and um, I've been working here for 22 years, started in 2002 as a graduate from uh, George Brown College. Hi there, uh, my name is Koglen Chinea. I'm an estimating manager here at Tridel. Uh, I've been with the company for just over eight years and I report to Tom, Senior Director. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Omid Nabifar. I'm the uh, scheduling manager here with Tridel. Uh, I joined Tridel uh, over six years ago and I have over uh, 25 years of scheduling experience. There's lots of experience between these three gentlemen, so we'll get to hear a lot about estimating and uh, some of the different pathways to get there. Um, Tom and I were talking a little briefly earlier about all the different ways that estimating has plays a role in the construction construction industry. Um, so we'll start and we'll ask Tom a question, and we're going to say, you know, what is an estimator and what does this profession do as part of the construction process? Okay, thanks, Ryan. So here at Tridel, um, the estimating team has essentially evolved from uh, the onset of the project. That to us means from the land acquisition stage. And what we're responsible for is essentially reading and reviewing all the documents that are provided to us on a particular land parcel. And uh, we review, we create cost estimates, we um, create timelines and ensure that whatever we're putting into the, the project is essentially enough and sufficient for us to have a successful project launch. And uh, we're involved from the land acquisition stage, which is the earliest stage, all the way to the final occupancy of the last suite. Um, and in that time period, we're adjusting the cost estimate. We're ensuring that the design is optimized uh, through value engineering. Um, we're in cost monitoring to ensure that we're still on track. And um, that's effectively what we do. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and for those of you that don't know, land acquisition is when you physically, per or actually the company purchases the land or partners with somebody to develop on that piece of property. Um, awesome. So, uh, Coughlin, what are your responsibilities as the estimating manager? Actually, tell us first, what is an estimating manager? Um, estimating, my main role as an estimating manager is to prepare accurate construction budgets at various stages of design development. 
uh, from initial stage where you do uh, land purchase yeah. to a very detailed um, pretender stage where you have tons of information to capture within the estimate. Uh, so it's it's a it, it's very easy. Um, and um, also I have to perform additional tasks um, and uh, responsibilities as requested by the senior director as well as the project management and the construction department like um, review and analysis of various design options uh, component and site specific costing value engineering analysis uh, preparation of staffing and uh, labor charts, uh, dealing with um, cost consultants, and so on. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <It's a lot. laughs> um, so I have to work closely with uh, the team members within the department and also with the other departments, as well as to the external cons uh, cost consultants uh, to get the job done. And I also have to provide uh, leadership and mentorship uh, to the intermediate and junior staffs. So I think that's pretty much it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very collaborative position. It's not right. just us working in isolation. There is times where we do work independently, but uh, we do work a lot with other departments. There are a lot of inputs that we get, whether it's through the marketing team or the development team or the project management team, okay. even the site team. They all provide information for us that we collaborate with them and create the best possible cost budget okay. for the project to ensure that it's the project is successful. Good to know. So like one of the, I guess, key sort of qualities or, you know, skills that you'll bring to the table is that you can work in a team. Because mm -hmm. right? I guess some jobs are very much like independent. You might work a little bit with a team, but this one seems like a, so an abundance of teamwork. It's a, it's a little bit of both. So there is a lot of teamwork, but there's a lot of independent work where you're working um, alone in terms of you have to be able to have the ability to concentrate and manage your time so you can um, measure effectively okay. and, and price that. That is independent work. The collaborative work, the teamwork comes all before that where you're gathering information, you're, gotcha. uh, you're providing information with what you've read in the documents and, and so on and so forth. Okay, Yeah. good to know. Um, that's great. So, um, Let's move to Omid. So tell me a little bit. So we have your scheduling manager. So what is a, what is a scheduling manager? So um, scheduling basically deals with project timelines rather than cost. So um, uh, I deal with project timelines, make sure uh, we meet the deadlines. And uh, basically, we meet our commitments to home buyers and deliver on time. So uh, uh, the little difference with the estimating is that I deal with time rather than cost. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. I think when I think schedule, I think of like my day to day, right? So yeah. like your person schedule, but you're talking like a project schedule, yeah. like and how long that might take. Yeah, project okay. time. Okay, which yes. makes sense that it would fall in the estimating, yeah. you know, scope of work because you're trying to estimate how long it's going to take exactly. for a project to be completed. So I, I okay. do estimating, but yeah. I do estimate the timelines and durations of right. the project. Okay. Yeah. And there are cost implications to his of timeline. Course. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what does a typical day look like for a scheduling manager? So um, I would deal with, again, I would deal with the project timelines for every project and uh, potential future projects that we have. So. A typical day for me would look like uh, developing developing high-level timelines for uh, future potential projects at land acquisition stage, or it could be doing some uh, revisions to timelines for our uh, projects that are under design and development phase. So at times we have uh, scope change for projects that are at design stage. Uh, a scope change would typically have an impact on a project timeline. Uh, or alternatively, I would meet with uh, project staff for ongoing projects to measure their progress to date. And uh, basically, if there are any delays or so, try to find solutions to mitigate the delays so that we could meet our deadlines 
and hand over sweets on time to home buyers. Okay. Yeah. So you're kind of like that magic eight ball that you shake and you're like, so <laughs> how long is this project going to take? Yeah. And you're hoping to just like know the magic answer at the end of it, yeah, which exactly. we all know, like anybody who understands construction, even at the like smallest amount, there's so much that goes into it, right? It's not as simple as tearing this down and putting this up. It's all the other things involved that, and you're dealing with people, right? And you know, life happens. And so I, I just feel like it's such a, it's so difficult to predict a timeline yeah. and then obviously the cost changes and things like that. So this is actually like a very, um, it seems like it's a very, like the, your, your job and your duties evolve as the project evolves as things get, you know? Yeah. And that's why it's important to monitor um, how we're progressing on site in terms of time and in terms of cost. Right. Um, at, at the onset, effectively it's a point in time that we've determined that this project, if everything goes well, mm -hmm. it's kind of like putting coordinates in your GPS. Right. You've used this example before, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? You're putting your coordinates on a, in, a, in a map and you're saying that this destination will take me half an hour, I'm gonna use X dollars of gas money. Right. So on and so forth, yeah. but things come up. Yeah. There might be an accident, there might be construction, yeah. there might be detours that you have to take. And part of the process is monitoring and adjusting so you can get to the final destination in an appropriate amount of time. Got it. Yeah. It's like that saying, like, Toronto is two hours from Toronto. Correct. Right? So yeah. it's like, that, you know, <laughs> sometimes you can make it across Toronto in 45 minutes, but when you hit all those roadblocks and all that traffic, it's, it's affecting your timeline. Yeah, and so. that's where contingencies come into place. That's where experience and experts come into place. And that's where the collaboration comes into place. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want the big surprise at the end when you haven't checked in with the team on site to see the progress and check in and you're like, oh, you, you mean we're six months behind? Yeah. Like, why didn't I know that? Exactly. Well, like, <laughs> that's why you collaborate. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess like we've sort of touched on it a little bit, but you know, your roles and responsibilities as senior director of estimating, is there like, I'm sure there's much more to it than... Um, <laughs> high, level. Guess, high level, um, we talked about cost management and we talked about uh, scheduling management. We also have a lot uh, to do with procurement. Okay. Um, we coordinate the drawings for procurement. We send out tenders, uh, we gather pricing and we have all this information available to us that effectively forms our database, okay. um, which we utilize to create our cost estimates and time schedules. Okay. Yeah. Very. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts. Yeah, there are a lot of moving parts, um, for sure. Well, that's awesome. So considering that this is like, you know, definitely a professional career and that you need to, there's a lot of, um, what would be the word I'm looking for? Um, maybe not specific knowledge, but it just seems like there's, there's, there's things that you need to be able to bring to the table to be successful as an estimator or a scheduling manager or, you know, in this, in this field. Um, so, uh, Coughlin, can you, how did you, you know, start your career? Where did you go post-secondary? Did you? Um, yeah, so I did my bachelor's degree uh, in construction related field back home in Sri Lanka. Okay. And after I immigrated to Canada, um, I attended George Brown College and um, um, did a program in construction estimating. Okay. And I think that helped me uh, to start my career here in Canada. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we're big fans of George Brown College around here, so they have a lot of really excellent construction-related programs um, that like provide you with so much knowledge and how to you know get started in some of these careers. So in that case, um, what did you take back home in Sri Lanka? That was uh, I did quantity surveying. Okay. So in back home, they don't call as estimators. Right. Instead, they say um, cost. Um, quantity surveyors. Okay. If you work for a consultant, it's consultant's quantity surveyor. And if you work for a contractor, it's contractor's quantity surveyor. Okay. So that's the difference. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, awesome. So, you know, like while we're sort of on that topic, Tom, what did you, how did you become an estimator? What did you take in school? Uh, I went to George Brown College for the construction management technician program. Okay. It was a while ago, so I had to think <laughs> about what the program was. Not uh, that long ago. <laughs> um, yeah, so I spent uh, three years there and then uh, I saw an application to join the estimating team here at Tridel and I applied for it and uh, I started off as a junior estimator and at that time um, I, w I learned how to read drawings, how to read documents, how to measure things and as opportunities came to me I uh, moved up through intermediate estimator, senior estimator, and now I'm managing a team of experts. And awesome. um, yeah. That's great. Yeah. 
So it's like just go show you you know put in the time you put in the effort you put in the you know and and you and it seems like you're learning a lot as you go as well. So well, I haven't you stopped bring, learning. Yeah, right? yeah. I always say that it's like a sp in this job too, and I say this every episode. Like I learn so much from like I think I know what an estimator is until I sit down and start talking. Like I had actually no idea, um, which is nice to know though because yeah. there's so much to learn. And, well, there's uh, a lot to learn and yeah. things constantly change. There's yeah. uh, new building code requirements that come into place. Right. There's new designs that come into place. You have to learn all these things yeah. to properly account for them. Absolutely. Yeah. The technology changes. So the the know, buildings like, that we built 20 years ago are not the same as they are right. today. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Which makes sense. I mean, you know, you learn, everybody learns the hard way in one way or another. And I don't want to say the hard way, but in construction, it's, it is very much evolving mm -hmm. as, you know, materials change and technology changes. Yes. And, you know, you find different ways of doing things. So it's, yeah, everything, everything in construction evolves. Um, Omid, what about you? What did you, did you take post-secondary to? I did, yes. I, um, I got my bachelor's degree in civil engineering okay. and I got a master's degree uh, for structural design. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So there's several different pathways into estimating. So mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like you, there's like, you know, if you want to go be a doctor, you go to university and you take your doctor courses and it seems like in construction, there seems to be so many different pathways that are so relatable mm -hmm. to all the different career paths. Um, yeah. And you know, there's three different career paths here that ultimately landed you with the same company in different positions, but with, you know, with, with the same team. Yeah. Right. So that's wonderful. Um, We'll go back to Tom and we did the schooling one. So typical career pro progression. We just talked about that a little bit. Um, so you mentioned a junior role. So yeah. what's the junior role? Uh, so uh, as I was saying earlier, it was just really just learning how to read doc documents, okay. um, understanding how drawings get put together uh, so you can properly measure them. That you learn through school. You can also learn it as uh, being part of a trade. You can learn it being on site. Mm -hmm. There's no one straight path to say you go from school, like we did, to yeah. estimating or scheduling. You Your career path could take many different pathways. You can start, as I said, as a trade where you could be measuring and quantifying and estimating specific um, costs for that one trade. You can be on site uh, measuring concrete for a specific concrete pour that's part of estimating as well. Right. It's a small part, but it's a part, it's yeah. a fundamental. And uh, you can also be uh, a consultant to ensure that the building that you're designing is within what your client is anticipating to spend. Okay. Right? Awesome. Yeah. Good to know. So it's like, yeah, even I guess just in, um, so there's the junior world. Is it called a junior estimator for most yeah. companies? Yeah. So I started as a junior estimator. I would imagine that it would be similar, similar? Tit okay. titles and similar learning and foundations um, that you're gaining through your first, let's say, call it one to five years, one to three years right. um, before you progress onto the next level. Gotcha. Yeah. Similar for like project management. We did an episode on project management and it seems like you start like sort of like a site coordinator before yeah. you even sort of move into that project management trajectory. Yeah. There's certain foundations and fundamentals that you have to learn. Um, part of being a good estimator is understanding the construction process. You right. have to have that fundamental. Yeah. And the experience yeah. in it. Yes. Yeah. Starting as a senior director of estimating wouldn't be a practical um, starting point <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> to just sort of jump into this career path, right? You, mm -hmm. need, you need the experience, the knowledge, and you can only do that in time. Exactly. You can't fast track that. Yeah. Okay. Um, awesome. Uh, Coughlin, what it, so how long did it take to you to progress to an estimating manager? So you mentioned you started in Sri Lanka. Yeah. So how long did you work back home for a while? Uh, yeah, I did work there. Uh, but after I immigrated to Canada, um, I got my first job with a cost consultant okay. as a cost analyst, which is equivalent to a junior estimator. Uh, I think it was in back uh, 2009. And then I worked there for about six years uh, and I got the opportunity to join Tridel back in 2016 as a senior estimator. And in 2021, I got promoted to estimating manager. So for me, it took about 12 years, okay. but I think it depends, it, it will vary depends on the organization structure as well as the capabilities of each individual. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. It's, it's good to have a little bit of a timeline for people to, especially, you know, youth who are just sort of entering into um, the workforce, be it in construction or, you know, your first McDonald's job. Yeah. Um, things take time, right? So you can be keen, you can be ambitious, you can, you know, you want to, you can want to start at the top, 
um, but it's just not realistic, right? You need to put in your time, you need to gain the experience, you need to learn from your, you know, your senior members. And I can only imagine um, working in such a close team environment, how much you learn from each other like day to day. And that's, those are the skills you build as you progress in your career. Yeah. So, you know, 15 years later and, and you have all of this under your belt, and now you're more more likely to be able to get into those senior roles, right? Exactly. So, good to know, Omid. So you're we talked about your educational background. Um, so your progression to scheduling manager. How did you get to where you are now? Yeah. So when I moved to Toronto, I already had a few years of civil engineering and scheduling experience. Uh, I got my first uh, job here as a building science technician. It was for less than a year. However, it gave me very good insight into how uh, how buildings are built here and give me, gave me an insight into different types of construction and di different types of buildings and structures that we have here in Canada. After that, I got a position with a big general contractor as a um, project scheduler. I stayed with them for nine years. That, that position gave me a very good opportunity to uh, have uh, exposure to different construction sites and meet with different uh, project management teams and uh, have the opportunity to uh, deal with project difficulties and issues firsthand. After that, I moved to another GC for two years, uh, running a renovation project on a live hospital, which was very um, um, a very cri critical project with difficult issues at hand uh, and after two years I joined Tridel and I was exposed to many condo multi-purpose and uh, multi-phase projects for four years before I was promoted to a uh, scheduling manager. Oh. Yeah. What's it like to work on a live hospital? That must have been like pretty intense yeah yeah that <laughs> specific project now that you brought it up uh, had over 45 different phases and wow. with very um, uh, very uh, time sensitive uh, deadlines imagine we are uh, doing a renovation right uh, beside a um, operation room wow. right and we have to finish on time so that operation can start next day or uh, mother and baby uh, section where you have to finish work so that babies are planned for uh, basically next day right. um, being born. So there are a lot of uh, very time sensitive deadline for such a project. Wow, that must have given you a lot of skill and uh, you know, because your job is so, it, it evolves around project timelines and Absolutely. trying to meet these deadlines, right? So that must have given you I don't want to say a leg up, but provided you that experience to be able to, you know, understand even better how to, um, like, project a timeline. Absolutely. For, wow. Absolutely. I couldn't even yeah. imagine what that would be like. I just think about the chaos of a hospital when it's, you know, not under construction. Yeah. Never mind when it's also <laughs> under construction. So I'm sure, and I mean, all construction projects have their difficulties, absolutely. And I know, you know, the Tridel at the well, the, that one was... Um, a huge development that went up all at the same time, which mm -hmm. isn't typical, right? Most construction yeah. projects happen in stages and you do it through phases because when you're, how many buildings is the well? Five? Seven. 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 Oh man. Yeah. I even worked down there and I can't remember. <laughs> um, but but it got seven buildings at the same time. Yeah. It was quite an endeavor. That's sure. a lot. Yeah. That That's wild. <laughs> like, this is why I get to learn about it rather than try to do it myself because those buildings would not be up. <laughs> um, so, you know, I think maybe a, like a good way to take this is like sort of most challenging and like best part of your uh, of your work. So let's start yeah. with you, Tom. Let's I think uh, I think we've all kind of touched on it. Omen yeah. touched on it. Um, I think probably the most challenging part of our work is the timelines that we're, we're dealing with. Um, most often they can't be changed. So um, we have to manage our time well. We have to work well together split up the work and ensure that we finish the project on time right. and the project being not the physical project the project in itself that i'm talking about is the cost and schedule right right so that's one aspect of it um so there are a lot of time constraints that we can't necessarily change um but we manage it well um that's why we love working with each other and um 
uh, I would say the most rewarding thing is working with a team of experts and just seeing the, the vision that we had from the land acquisition where there was re really no information available to us right. to the final product and seeing somebody move into their suite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool. And it gives you that sense of pride. Yeah, right? absolutely. Like, yeah. I know pride's a big one in the construction industry, and I can see it from this side of things too. Even though you're not on site and watching it, you know, in real time, obviously you're still going down there and you're checking and you're. you're but yeah, that sense of completion at the end, you're like, we did it. Yeah, like, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we have the micro completion <laughs> yeah. being the estimate and the and the and the ultimate go ahead to go, to start to start. Yeah, to seeing it finish. That's it's a long. Yeah. cycle that could be seven years um, but to see that complete picture is what's most rewarding I, I bet too is like especially if you if you get to start from the beginning and mm -hmm. go all the way to the end like and how rewarding that would be yeah right and you get to see the cycle all the way through and I think that's something that um, would be very rewarding to be able to watch because again like it's a huge team that's you know from estimating to the physical completion like that's hundreds of people Absolutely. that are, yeah. you know, putting their time and their energy and their effort into this, in, into a development. Yeah. Right. So that's, that's very cool. Um, do you have anything to add Coglin about, you know, uh, what's your favorite thing? <laughs> you know? uh, yeah. The interesting part, um, my favorite subject is math. Okay. So in that perspective, uh, working with numbers and uh, providing accurate budget, that's the most interesting thing for me and uh, I like enjoying it. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to challenging part, Tom already touched on it. At uh, the very early stage of the design uh, development, you will not have all the design information available. So you have to refer um, the comparable projects and use your uh, own assumption to come up with uh, accurate budget. Okay. Um, so we have a great boss here and we have a great team. So we support each other and try to get the job done. That's great. Omid, what about you? What's your favorite, like favorite, favorite part of the job? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll just give you an example. Um, to simplify the job uh, that I do, imagine uh, an event planner. So for a wedding or so, an event planner would put like 10, 15 different activities that are gonna happen during an event which one has to finish before the other one starts and they are all time sensitive and that would be for just one day event, right? right. Cons the construction of a, a residential tower could take over like four years with hundreds and at times uh, thousands of activities that need to happen in a timely manner before we can have the units uh, and suites complete and uh, deliver the key to the home buyers in a timely manner. So. For me, all that said, uh, for me, the most exciting part is to digitally model all that construction process on my computer and then see it come to life um, in, in real construction job site and see it from starting from um, project start to completion. That part is very uh, rewarding, especially playing uh, a key role in making sure that the project meets its deadlines. And um, it also involves a lot of problem solving. Uh, I also use the analogy of gaming. So you're basically at every, every single day, something unforeseen could happen. It could rain or it could snow or uh, that can delay your project. And you have to always be on top of things and find solutions to bring the project back on time to meet your deadlines again right. and the commitments that we have. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I am um, when so I just from working in the sales office a little bit, you know, sometimes you get homeowners that want to, um, you know, make modifications to their suites and things like that. Is it does that affect your your timelines much or is it just like can it? it well, it can. <laughs> <laughs> um, we try and work and manage around that. Okay. Yeah. That's for my own curiosity yeah. because I know that like some people, you know, it's, it's they're very simple, yeah. you know, things that they want to change, so, but sometimes so they for the most part, elaborate. they are simpler and they're outside of the critical path, okay. which manages the end timeline really. Right. Um, but there are occasions when the when they do become part of the critical path, and we have right. to manage it that way. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. 
I, uh, not that I would ever be able to modify a condo to go, you know, that extreme, <laughs> but <laughs> for my own knowledge, I feel like one day I'm going to purchase the most elaborate condo that I possibly can, and I will take into consideration the timeline. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so your average hours, because obviously we've learned that there's like, there, there's so many parts, moving parts to being an estimator or working in the estimating field. Um, is it like mostly nine to five? Do you need to be flexible? You, you, uh, you do need to be flexible. Um, standard, you could say 8, 30, 9 to 5 okay. type. Uh, Monday to Friday. Monday to Friday. Yeah. But there are times where we, we may have to put in an, uh, an extra effort okay. to, to meet a certain requirement, and we make adjustments accordingly. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I find that's nice to know because sometimes, you know, some people only want to work nine to five and mm -hmm. Monday to Friday, not have to think about it. And then there's people that are more flexible. So this is one of those careers where you need to make sure that you're um, keeping in mind what your team needs as well. Exactly. Right. Because yeah. if one of your team members is like, oh, I really need, you know, we need to get this part done, then you need to work together to get it done. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, let's talk pay. So everybody always wants to know, like, the pay structures, the pay, and it, obviously this is going to vary. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't like a union job where you're like you start here and you end here. Um, this will vary like by developer, by trade, by. But what's roughly sort of like your starting point, earning potentials? Yeah. So I would say as a starting point, a, a postgraduate, recent graduate uh, that's learning to gain experience would be in the range of forty-five thousand a year okay um, but as they progress and as their career takes different paths within the estimating field there and they gain experience um, and more responsibility the salary could range to over a hundred okay so there's there's lots of potential then there's mm -hmm. lots of you know and it, like you said because you, you start junior roles you can make it to senior roles and right. I mean these are all senior members here um, that have talked about how much time they've put in right to get to these these positions yeah right so patience is a virtue <laughs> and, and again we're developer focused so yes. the pay structure could be completely different for a general contractor right um, or for a trader for a consultant okay yeah. so this is something that if, if um, you know the pay structure pay scale is like your biggest concern it's going to vary based on on what type of industry you're working exactly, in. exactly right yeah. so keep that in mind um, okay, what can someone do to get started? Um, okay, so uh, we didn't touch on uh, what I did before I got to yes, try it out. Let's do so um, I actually started uh, working for a low rise builder as a rough carpenter. Okay. And that's where I started to gain my basis in understanding drawings and how low rise buildings uh, get put together. Um, so one can start anywhere where they're going to start learning the fundamentals of construction that could be through school okay. that could be by working on site um, that could be by working with a consultant um, that's effectively where you have to start building your foundation because the main part of it is understanding how a building is put together right yeah okay so that makes sense yeah <laughs> we all have post-secondary uh, education mm -hmm. uh, here at various uh, levels but having that experience um, is also very important okay yeah. it seems like you know probably um, ideally you would you would come to the table with both right yeah. you'd have that post-secondary degree um, be it at the college or university level um, in an appropriate program right and yes. then also some site experience yeah. right or just at least some sort of a understanding of what like you said like the construction process because it's important you one thing that i learned that can be very humbling is you think you know until you actually are like in the trade or in the field and then you realize you didn't mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like it's very i thought i knew a lot about construction and then i started working for trade i'm like oh i know nothing yeah. like i <laughs> this no one ever I, even today i still say that i learn every day um, no one's going to know everything. Yeah. Uh, it's about having a passion and uh, the ability to absorb information and utilize that information that you've absorbed. Right. So um, if you have a passion and this is something that you're interested in and you like working independently, but also in a group setting, this and you like mathematics, as, uh, as Kuglin mentioned <laughs> <Seems> earlier, <key. laughs> um, it, this could be something that you, could be for you. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Good to know. And then, um, 
so just in terms of experience, you could you could come into this with very little experience in terms of estimating, yeah. but you're starting in that junior role. Exactly, okay. and that's how my career yes. started. And as it seems well. like everybody started in a junior role in one way or another. Absolutely, and yes. then worked your yeah. way up, yeah. right? Yes. So let's get some last words of advice because I think we've covered like a good a good chunk of the material. Yeah, give us some advice. Give us some words of wisdom. Do you do you have any skill? Let's. What kind of skills do you need to bring to the table, outside of you know a degree and sort of being in the construction yeah. industry? Is there anything that fundamentally is a person that you can bring to? Yeah. I think we've we've all kind of touched on it. Um, again, as I said a couple of minutes ago, it, it, you have to be able to work independently. Mm -hmm. um, you also have to be able to work as a team. And you should have interest in mathematics and you should be interested in process. Um, having an analytical mind is also very helpful um, and being able to see the big picture okay. with all the little intricate parts that are going into this, you have to be able to pull back also and see the big picture. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. And that is something that will vary by person, right? Of course, because yeah. it's like, I don't know if I would be able to take a step back and, and visualize it in a way that would be um, beneficial as an estimator, yeah. right? So so if you're passionate okay. about all yeah. these things, yeah. all the other things will fall in place with right. time. Yeah, uh, As long as you have that passion and that belief that uh, this is something for you, everything else will fall into place. Got it, okay. Pugum, what about you? Do you have any? Um, I think Tom covered everything. Yeah. Uh, do your hard work, and if you're ready to work independently and uh, collaboratively, okay. success will follow. Perfect. Um, Omid? Um, again, as Tom mentioned, uh, like everything else, you need to start small as a junior and grow bigger and uh, be open to learn every day and use your knowledge every day to grow. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. It seems like patience is one of those things too, right? Where you need to be able to a, be patient in your career trajectory mm -hmm. because it's not going to happen overnight. Um, but also being patient with your team members, right? Because if, you know, if one person's falling a little bit behind because something came up, then you need to, you know, so I feel like there's, um, some people are just like inherently patient people, yeah. right? You're okay for things to take a little, take a minute, take a little bit longer. But ultimately, don't panic. <laughs> well, we work in a, you know? in a pretty high paced environment yeah. with pretty strict timeline so yeah we manage all that and we work together as a team to yeah. manage that and I don't see anybody running around like losing their minds ever so I think you probably handle it pretty well <laughs> <laughs> my office is a little bit south of theirs our building is quite big um, but everybody looks pretty calm most days so I think you know you're inherently patient people that <laughs> <laughs> take things in stride when you need to. Yeah. Um, and then I think like for any job, and we do touch on this at times too, is like just make sure that you're like you're eager, you're willing, you show up on time, you come to work with you know the right attitude, the right you know. One hundred percent. Yeah, because I think when um, one thing that will translate to all jobs is like your attitude is key, and especially if you're working in a team environment. Yeah. You know, if you're being negative all the time, it affects everybody else that you're working with, right? So it's 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 important to just breathe, <laughs> enjoy your job, put in the time, put in the effort, put in the teamwork, and uh, I think you'd have a, quite a successful career if you're good at math. Like math <laughs> seems very key. Again, would not be a good estimator. I need my calculator for all the things, <laughs> and I'm sure you guys use calculators. Yeah, we do. Too, but there's formulas involved. <laughs> That like would never, they would never stick in my brain. But I'm sure that you guys like probably fall asleep like thinking about all the formulas and you can picture them in your heads. That's a different I session. Be, like, <laughs> 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 it'll be a therapy session. Um, I think that's all I have for today. So well, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for joining thank us. You. That was pleasant. Like I said, I learned so much and I oh. love these episodes because I feel like by the time I, I get through all of these, I'll know way more than I ever thought I could possibly know, and I'll still have a lot to learn. Well, thank you for having us. We enjoy talking about what we Our do pleasure. every day. Thank you. <laughs> the pros. <laughs> thank you for tuning in, and uh, if you want to share this on YouTube, it'll be posted uh, by tomorrow. Thanks for joining. <laughs>